thought I was Mr. Cool up till now, and look at me now. Oh, okay. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today I'm joined by Mac DeMarco. He has a tour coming soon, so keep an eye out. And then his forthcoming album, This Old Dog, is set to release on May 5th. Mac, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. How are you with hot food? I like to think that I like it, but perhaps we're about to find out. How are your stomach issues? I know you used to have some stomach issues. Have they improved over the years? No, no, actually I had a pretty spicy burrito last night, so I have a bit of the ring effect going on right now. Uh-oh. And this is just gonna compound the effects. But it's gonna be okay, I think. Yeah, it'll be chill. First one is sriracha. Sriracha is not a big deal. This side here. Oh uh, no 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 no. Okay. Okay <laughs> now. <laughs> so I read in an Esquire profile that you used to submit yourself to medical experiments as a way to pick up some extra cash, which sounds like a great way to make some money if you're in a bind. But I imagine that there are some pitfalls to that. I mean, I, it wasn't really extra cash. It was just the only cash I was, and it wasn't very much cash. And it turns out, you know, it's just, you do all these strange things. I was running on treadmills. We had the magnets. They were shooting magnets into my skull. We were, you know, cognitive. You read, you know, we, all this, almost no money. Five bucks an hour sometimes. Waste of time. Actually, funny story with that. They don't tell you what the, the, the drug is going to be right before, until right before you go in. And it was going to be like a new Viagra or some equivalent. So it would have been me, all these other guys in like hospital gowns with boners. I don't know, I don't know, okay. not interested, you know, kind of weird. All kinds of crap, you know? Glad I don't have to do it anymore though, I'll tell you, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, the square, mm. Mm. oh yeah, okay. I know that you've toured North America in a busted down Ford Escort, hatchback sedan, and I've heard you say that you prefer the van to the tour bus. I've never taken a tour bus. I Why? Never, I never will. Why? It's a waste of money. It's a waste of money. And also you gotta get on it at like two or three in the morning. You got no control over your own life. Some weird driver guy that sleeps all day and then only is awake at night like some vampire. I don't wanna travel with the vampire. And I don't wanna, you know. It's too weird, it's too weird. But if you're taking an old broken down car, yeah. you have some issues too. If you think about the times that you were stranded on the side of the road, are there any yeah. stories that kind of stand out when you're just broken down? Actually, we had uh, my mom's car, uh, Dodge, Dodge Neon? Yeah, Neon, Ford, ne Dodge, I don't know. Car broke down in a, a town called Sault Ste. Marie, Northern Ontario, it was the middle of winter. Kind of, we took it to a mechanic. He's like, yeah, this is gonna be done for two days. So we're like kind of walking around like, you know, we're gonna have to sleep outside, this sucks, you know? But this guy, I think his name was Alfie or something, found us on the street. A guardian angel. Took us to his house, macaroni and cheese. He gave us, he was trying to give us clothing. Amazing, never saw the guy again, but if you're out there, God bless you. From the outside looking in, you maintain a pretty powerful diet of cheap beer, cigarettes, and pizza. But despite living in Montreal and in Bushwick, you seem to have no patience for these hipster foodie trends. So what I wanna do is bounce some of the biggest obsessions going on right now. And I just wanna get your snap take on it, okay? Does that sound good? Okay. All right. You impressed by our production over here? I like it, yeah. All these handsome people. God bless. All right, double IPAs. I hate IPAs. When I'm having a beer, it's so that I can feel the effects of drinking the alcohol, you know? And you don't want to have like a full meal situation. No, nah, I don't want to, you know, it's like, yeah, I don't have time for it. And they're more expensive than a normal beer. Just keep it locker. just get it out of here. Juicing, are you a juice guy? No, 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 my girlfriend, she loves it. I don't, mm -mm. I like smoothies, you know? Juicy, take away all the skins, the, the bits, the chunks. You need that stuff, it's good for you, yeah. Avocado toast, are you an avocado toast guy? I do, yeah, I like toast, I like avocados. It's kind of like Australian breakfast vibe right there. But um, the price that this goes for nowadays is ludicrous. 
Especially the, what, the bread and the toast, $8 for a piece of bread? Oh my God. Ridiculous. It's got a wolf on it. Uh, wolf flavored. Okay. Mm. So, some celebrities are known for their gym selfies and others for their witty tweets, but I think that your greatest social media contribution is the hashtag. I'll see hashtags like mm. Jar Jar Binks or beefy short but fat dick on photos that feature <laughs> neither Jar Jar Binks nor fat dicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The internet changed a little bit, I feel like. We, we didn't have even the internet in our apartment in Montreal, so I missed a little bit. Then when I came back, I was like, what is this? I didn't understand it. Gave it a crack, and now people are loving it. I think, I'm, you know, to speak to Jar Jar, I, I'm a huge fan of his. Hopefully we'll be seeing him in some of the upcoming Star Wars. You're one of the few guys that wants to bring Jar Jar Binks back, huh? We're out there. As someone who crafts lyrics for a living, is there a poetry in hashtags or is it all just kind of bullshit? Um, I think that all social media is pretty much total baloney. So that's why I treat it like that. It's a terrifying space, especially for young people these days. Oh. Mm. Mm. It's a bit sweet. Mm -hmm. That's lovely. Mm. So the next part of the show is called Explain That Gram, and you've seen the show before, so you know how it works. Mm. We do a deep dive on our guest's Instagram. We pull interesting pictures that we think need more context. So I'll show you the picture, and then you tell me the broader story. Does that sound good? Sounds good. All right, laptop, back out. A little chicken and milk. <laughs> Can you talk to me about the Eric Andre show? You did the Eric Andre show. We did. Um, Eric, lovely guy. Crazy guy, perhaps, but lovely. You know, it's actually crazy. As, um, perhaps you've seen the bit where the guys are beating me up with these bamboo sticks. He told me that, oh, they're not going to be using, like, real, uh, you know, swords or whatever. It's going to be, like, you know, prop swords. But the prop swords are still made out of rubber. But I walked off with all these, like, crazy welts across my... It kind of hurt. Oh, it was crazy. Yeah, it was pretty insane. Yeah, and when they tied me up, you know, it was like... It was legit. Uh, Nardwar. Yes. Is he Nardwar. the greatest Canadian? Uh, I think he, yeah, he's up there for sure. To do the show and for him to, you know, oh, I know this and I've got this present. You know, it's like, okay, this is crazy. You know, say say the interviews he did in the 90s with like Blur, Sonic Youth or Nirvana or whatever. They had no idea, but of me going in, obviously, I'm like, I love you, Nardwar. So it's, <laughs> but it wasn't, he had some crazy stuff. He yeah, did it. it surprise you even if you go in with those expectations? Yeah, he did surprise me. I, a lot of the things I was just kind of, as soon as he'd say something, I'd be like, who told you that? You know, it was, that was what was, the cogs were going. I was like, was it Mish or Ryan or? I have one more for you. This last one's a video. Oh, yes. That, do you know the proper term for that? Lighting a fart on fire? Blue Angel. Why is setting your farts on fire the funniest thing you can do? A fart is funny enough um, just on its own, but it's like you get to, uh, it's like, it's double trouble, you know? All right, so the next one, you're probably wondering why you have a purple wing, and that's because this next one. Blueberry. Mm -hmm. Blueberry ghost pepper. It's rock and roll. Mm. Mm hmm. It's nice. So you have kind of a laid back disposition, but your live shows aren't that way. They're pretty high energy from getting butt naked on stage to crowd surfing. You put yourself in some pretty precarious situations. Do you ever get in trouble with the venue? Have you ever had a situation where you had an awkward face to face with say a promoter or a club owner? It's half the fun though. You know, you get up on the balcony and you're like, I'm gonna jump back into the crowd and the security's like, no, no, no. It's like, <laughs> see you later, buddy. You know, it's like, that's kind of, that's what makes it fun for me. And we had Redman in here, and he was telling us a story about when he was vibing out with the crowd one time. He was on acid, so he didn't really notice it, but a fan was cattle prodding him while he was in the crowd with them. Have you ever had a fan, like, commit a borderline felony on you? Actually, well, let's see. I think, see this scratch right here, if you can see that? Yeah. That one, I thought it was gonna heal up and go away, but I think it might just remain up. But this is from somebody's fingernail at Glastonbury last year. But I get, I get beat up out there quite a bit, but no, no cattle prods yet. That that's a little bit. Yeah, kind of. Maybe, maybe I should rethink the crowd surfing thing after hearing that. That's kind of crazy. So this is where the game gets a little bit crazier than it has been so far. Okay. Now we're up zombie apocalypse. All right. Oh. 
Oh yeah. Okay. I'm down to shoot. Oh yeah, this one's. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Now we're getting somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Open it up a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So many regard you as sort of a dirtbag life coach, and I mean that as a compliment of the highest honor. So what we've done is we've pulled some common life dilemmas that everybody goes through, and we just want to kind of get the Mac DeMarco guide to self-improvement. Does that sound good? Uh, yeah, sure. Best hangover cure? Uh, hot wings. Is it, though? I'm feeling, you know, yeah, it's working. I feel getting the, uh, getting my spark back now. You feel like you deserve a raise. How do you approach your boss on that? Perhaps with politeness, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Excuse me, may I please have a raise, sir? Or madame, you know, or whatever. You have any advice for quitting smoking? I'm, I'm sure you tried <laughs> a couple times. Is there anything that helps? That doesn't work for me yet, but um, my mom read this book, some book where you're supposed to smoke and then you read it. And then by the end, you're just kind of like, I don't need that shit anymore, so. You're good, I don't know. Maybe you should try that. Yeah, maybe I will. Maybe I will. <laughs> How you feeling? I'm good, yeah. Tingly lips. Like it. You're holding it together good. Yeah. Surprising. I'm surprising myself, you know? Oh. Right off the bat. Oh, yeah. Oh, beyond insanity. Oh. Oh, damn it. Hit him. Oh, damn it. Yeah, okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I see. Now I see. Oh, yeah. What is this one? The bomb. What kind of pepper? Oh, yeah. Son of a... <sighs> Thought I was Mr. Cool up till now, and look at me now. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. So I want to talk about clothes for a second, because I've heard you describe your look as what? Bum chic? I don't know. Yeah, something like that. How many consecutive days of wearing pants is too many consecutive days of wearing the same pants? Pants I think you could get away with for, <laughs> for a little while. Oh, yeah. Yeah, wash your, if, you, if your pants start smelling like pee, wash them, that's the bottom line. <laughs> what about picking out a hat? Because you seem to like your hats like a worn-in catcher's mitt. Yeah. How do you pick out a good hat? What's, what's, what's the look for? They usually come to me, which is... Yeah, my girlfriend gets me a lot of them. Sometimes kids will gift them to me. But sometimes they're stolen. The longer they stay, the better. Oh, boy. Do you have a favorite? Right now, I've got this one with a yin-yang on it. The, the concept of a yin-yang, a little bit of balance. <laughs> and uh, my girlfriend gave it to me, so it's very sweet, you know? <laughs> wow, I wonder what these next two are going to be like. Do you want me cheers? Cheers. Cheers, Mac. Oh, am I, am I allowed to just cuss on this show? It's the internet, man. You can let it fly. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, yeah. You're good at this, eh? Well, you know what? It's just I've gone through it so many times. And then so there's like some responsibility on me, I feel like. So I think that helps. I like this. I don't get to cry in front of someone very often, so here we are. Yeah, this is vulnerable. <laughs> Opened yeah. up over wings and hot sauce, Thank Mac. Thank you so much for having me on your show, <laughs> man. <laughs> All right, so what I want to do is, you know, oftentimes on the show, we'll have guys with iconic beards talk about other iconic beards. With you, I want to talk about the Gap Tooth, because the Gap Tooth Club is a very exclusive club. So what I want to show you are some Gap Tooth icons, and I want to get Gap Tooth icons ranked according to Mac DeMarco. This one's sneaky. It's fucking it's sneaky. Hitting, yeah? yeah, it's sneaky. It's a little fucking sneaky guy. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. <sighs> My lips. Oh. Madonna. Madonna? Did she always have a gap though? I think so. Like what? Well, you wouldn't put that in. Some people do. No. Some people don't want to be in the club. Other people want it so bad. <laughs> but if she's OG, God bless her. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. You know what's crazy? We watched that. You see, though, like he does that, he toured that. That uh, one man show. One man show. I don't really know that much about Mike Tyson, but I was really impressed that he was able to do that. I don't think I could do that, and he's been hitting the head for like, you know, 20 years. It's crazy. It's me. Mac DeMarco. Yeah. I'll tell you the funny story about this guy. So when he was a kid, I went, I thought, 
thought, oh yeah, I'm gonna need braces to get this shot. Dentist was like, no, no, no. So I did go through a point where I was kind of like, what's up with this? What's going on here? You know, no, why hasn't anybody else got this? But you learn to love yourself. There's only one place to go. To, um, to make a death sauce. With? With liquid rage. Feel alive. Who's Blair? Blair? He's Blair. a dude from New Jersey. Got boogers all over my hands. He's a dude from New Jersey that mm -hmm. likes to make it spicy, huh? Whoa, this is a sick warning. This product contains the hottest known ingredients on planet Earth. Please use with extreme caution. It is tradition around here uh -huh. to put a little extra dab on the last wing. Okay. You don't have to if you don't want to. Yeah, that's fine. But you're pretty composed, Mac. A little just, in tears. Just really emotional, man. <laughs> You want to, uh, there you go. Okay, what is it? we got some kind of fiber on the a little Buffalo Wild Wings Chef eyelash in there. That's for extra flavor. <laughs> oh, Whoa. shit. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you know what? You got to reap what you sell. You made your bet, Mac. Uh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> You're a wild man. This is maybe the most generous dab we've had on the show. Coolio might have had you beat. He doused the whole wing. Really? Yeah. A spiceman. Yeah, real spiceman, real showman, Coolio. Yeah, yeah. Let's rock him up. All right. Pretty sweet again. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so you know, despite everything that you've accomplished in your musical career, the trappings of fame don't appear to excite you much. So I have to ask, while we're dying on Blair's Mega Death Sauce with Liquid Rage, what does success mean to Mac DeMarco? When are you happiest? Uh, oh. Oh, okay, yeah, now it's running, it's coming in now. Coming real good, I'm about to start drooling. Success, happiness. I think that no human really understands how to achieve happiness. And if you set goals for yourself, maybe you reach them, maybe you don't. If you take baby steps and you don't know what's around the corner, then perhaps being happy on the journey rather than at the destination is more easily achieved. Well, my nose hurts. But Mac, you made it through. A little bit of drool there at the end. That's all right, I'll still pound it. This camera, that camera, that camera. Let the people know what you have going on in your life. Going on tour soon. I'll see you out there. The nose feels freshly punched. The nose punch? Yeah, it feels like I've just been bonked. Come out to the shows. If you feel like listening to my new record, do it. If you don't, that's fine. Perhaps you like it, perhaps you don't. That's also fine. We'll be out there 2017, ripping and rocking for your pleasure. If you desire it, if not, don't worry about it, okay? Just, I'll see you soon. Mom, how'd you think he'd do? Well, I wasn't sure. He was, he did well. I was impressed. <sighs> I'm very dizzy. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? If you liked the video, maybe meet us halfway. Throw us a subscribe. If you didn't like the video, don't subscribe. I don't want you. I don't want you in the tent. But if you liked the video, subscribe. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. I love you. More than a friend.